Hey everyone, and thank you for joining me today for Sketchbook Sunday, episode 26. I usually try to avoid having two Sketchbook Sundays uploaded back to back without any videos in between, but unfortunately I didn't get to finish the other ones I had planned, but they are coming soon. So thank you so much for your patience. Be sure to follow me on Instagram so that you can see paintings in progress before they actually make it to YouTube. And I also post exclusive works in progress on my Patreon page. Today I am painting from life. I'm using some red carnation as reference to do a quick flower study. I'm working on a color mixing video for you guys, but I wanted to share a very simple basic tip, which I am gonna talk about in that video as well, but this can help you with getting the right color in your painting, and that is, as you are mixing, hold up your brush or palette knife, whatever you're using to mix colors, just hold it up to your reference. So for this carnation study, I was trying to get the tones of the petals, which consist of different reds, depending on the lighting. So there were darker reds for shadows and some lighter reds for the parts of the petals that are exposed to more light. So whether I was trying to paint petal shadow or petal mid-tone, I held up that color to the color I'm trying to create in real life. And this lets me judge whether or not the color on my paintbrush needs to be a bit more red, a bit lighter or darker, whatever it is, you can compare it right there in real life, right together, you know, side by side. Um, this works really well when you are painting from life, like you're using objects that you're actually looking at in real life uh, as a reference, or if you are using a printed photograph as reference, meaning that you physically have it, you're looking at an actual photo um, rather than a photo on a computer screen, which is completely different. I really don't think this method will work. And in fact, I've tried it and it doesn't really work. Um, you can't just hold up a paintbrush with paint on it to whatever color you're mixing if that reference is on your computer screen, because a computer screen is its own light source. When you are using a physical photograph in real life or a, a life reference that you're looking at, um, you are under the same light source. So the colors that you see on your brush and on the reference, they're under the same light source and it's a lot easier to match them that way. Um, when you hold it up to a computer, that's an entirely different light source. It's going to backlight your paintbrush. That's just going to throw off your, your perception. If you are looking at a computer screen as reference, then I would just suggest looking back and forth between the colors and the palette. You might be able to hold up your palette right next to the computer screen, but I wouldn't just hold up a brush like I suggested. Um, so that's what I usually do for most of my paintings. I just have my palette like on my lap and then I'm looking back and forth between the computer screen and my palette and judging colors that way. But for this this particular scenario, because I'm painting from life, I was able to actually hold up the brush to the subject, which is the physical carnation. And I think this is a great way for any artist. This is not anything new or groundbreaking that I came up with. You know, a lot of artists do it. It's a very common little tip that you can use for your own work. And I used to use it a lot. I used to actually print out most of my photography references and physically have them. So a lot of times this is what I would do. I would just hold up the brush to the reference and see does this color need a little bit more green or perhaps a little bit more blue? Does it need to be darker or lighter? And this really helped me out a lot. As I became more natural with being able to see colors and judge them accurately, I stopped doing that and I just started to use my computer as reference because now I sort of know just by looking back and forth whether the color is too blue or too green. I don't necessarily need to hold it up to a reference, although I really love that method and I find that it does actually help you get things to look more accurate. Um, and I will probably use it a lot in the future. So <laughs> yeah, another thing I wanna mention about trying to get accurate colors is that they don't have to match 100% perfectly to your reference. They just have to be as close as you can possibly get them. Um, they sort of work like a puzzle to make an image look real. And if you can at least be able to tell where those colors are and what tonal range they're in, um, for example, like in skin tones, if you can tell where there's more blues in certain parts of the shadows or more greens, getting them as close as possible will help the image look real. So. Again, I'm planning on doing a much more in-depth video dedicated specifically for color mixing, so I will demonstrate how to decide which colors to put where and how to mix them, how to get accurate colors. So I think for beginner painters, this concept can be 
a little bit intimidating if you've never done any sort of painting before, but it's really not as hard as it looks once it actually clicks in your head, once you understand. Um, it will definitely come more naturally to you. So I hope this video was a little bit helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!